Good morning, everyone. I'm Anthony Frangiatis from the drawing room in downtown New Bedford. Thank you for joining us this morning. I hope you're all well. Um, we are happy to be joined virtually with Jessica Allen from Farrell and Ball. Hi. And Jess is here. She's also working from home like the rest of us. Hi, Jess. Hey, Anthony. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here with you virtually. Yes. Typically, we would be doing this in the shop with all of our paint samples and people. We didn't want to miss the opportunity to talk color with you, especially now since um, it's spring and our new Colors by Nature have launched when, in the exterior eggshell. I was really happy to get the materials in the shop. Yeah, absolutely. Me too. That was a question that we got from basically day one was, can we get these in exteriors? Because there are so many fantastic colors that obviously complement the outside. Complement the outside and they're great um, jewel tones. I have them here. I've been sending out a lot of color cards recently. I don't know if you've had the same experience. Just uh, people have been interested in painting um, from, you know, outside garden projects uh, to inside rooms. So yeah. that's a very nice color wall you have behind you. Oh, why, thank you. Shall we guess? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I, I'm not going to guess because I know. <laughs> All right, fine. <laughs> Let everyone at home guess. Yes. And just I'll give you a five, four, three, two. <laughs> it's yeah. downpipe. I'm sure that there are some people out there that got that right. <laughs> yeah, down downpipe it is. Yeah. So I think what we'll end up doing, um, just to remind everyone, we this was originally scheduled to be celebrated as part of Art Week, which is a statewide festival here in Massachusetts. It was celebrated May 1st to May 10th, and we had one day one event for each day scheduled. Um, unfortunately, most of those events had to be postponed or rescheduled, and some of them we have been able to bring to you virtually. So this is our uh, second and third installment, excuse me, of Art Week at Home. So um, I think what I will end up doing here is sharing our additional screen so that Jess could get started with her presentation of Colors by Nature. Great. Thank you so much, Anthe. Um, I just will give a very brief introduction um, to Farrell and Ball in general. I think that probably most of you out there watching have some knowledge of Farrell and Ball. But just in case, um, we are a British brand and we manufacture paint and wallpaper. And what you're seeing on the first screen here is um, just a delightful mix of <laughs> pigment and uh, base, um, all of which we um, manufacture in-house. And if we just move to the next slide, um, what we will see there is um, a little bit of our history. So we've been making paint since the 1940s, and we've actually been doing it in the same place in Dorset, England since then. Our color chart has changed faces a few times um, throughout that period, but for the majority of our time as a commercial brand, we've offered 132 colors in our palette. And with that, we do, of course, add new colors from time to time, and we archive colors at the same time as we do that so that we keep a nice, concise palette of 132 colors, making the selection process a little bit less mysterious um, because all of us that have shopped for paint before know that there are thousands and thousands and thousands of choices out there, um, and this makes it a little bit easier. Um, the exciting bit that I'll be talking about a little bit more um, today is our kind of capsule collection of um, a few new additions. 16 to be in to be exact in our new NHM collection colors by nature so before I get into that um, just know that this is kind of a sidebar addition to our standard chart of 132 colors um, both of which you can um, get and see and use from Anthe at the drawing room if you haven't been to the shop before um, you can contact her great so this is another factory shot just showing our paint being manufactured um, something I always like to tell people is that the base ingredients in the paint itself are equally as important as the fact that we use these amazing really rich deep proprietary pigments in our product so there really is nothing else like Faro and Ball um, it has an amazing depth of color to it and it really just has this luminous quality Quality when you get it onto the walls. And like I said, that comes both from the base ingredients that 
comprise the actual paint itself, but also the heavily pigmented um, product that we have. And another little bit I like to share is that we are completely eco-friendly. That's so important to people, particularly these days. Um, so the product is all low odor, um, ultra low VOC, um, and across the board through all of our finishes, interior and exterior, you will get a product that stands up to that, um, which I think is a really nice quality. Now, um, what I'm about to get into is just kind of a quick introduction to our Colors by Nature collection. So like I said, these are 16 colors um, that we have launched in collaboration with the Natural History Museum in London. They actually launched last September, so we've had the palette around for a little while. And when we first launched, it was just interior finishes available. And I'm really happy that now we can actually offer the exterior finishes as well. And it comes at a perfect time when people are starting to get outside and do some exterior projects. And like Anthony was saying earlier, um, you know, I think that, you know, we've seen exactly what she's seen. You know, there are a lot of people either stuck in their homes <laughs> and uh, excited to do a little refresh um, because of the fact that um, they're staring at their walls. <laughs> and I know that, uh, you know, I've certainly seen some things around my home that I'd like to update. And then um, the other great thing is that for exterior projects, um, you know, it is something that's it's relatively safe to, um, if you did have a painter involved, um, to have someone come and, you know, work on the exterior of your house, um, you know, with keeping the social distancing that we're also um, you know, hot on right now. <laughs> uh, the curbside pickup as well as the complimentary shipping has helped significantly. So people oh, are really happy. People are really happy to know that um, it can be delivered right to their doorstep uh, without yeah. an extra charge at the moment. Absolutely, absolutely. So take advantage of that um, via Anthony and through the drawing room. All right. So this collection is actually based off of a book that was in the archives or is still in the archives at the Natural History Museum in London. Um, so we say this Natural History Museum collection um, is uh, something that is very closely tied with nature. And the reason behind that is that this book that you're seeing here, and I think Anthony has a copy, you know, in on hand, <laughs> perfect, um, is Werner's um, Nomenclature of Colors. So this, in essence, um, is something that I've heard referred to, which I really like, as the first Pantone. Um, essentially, what uh, this gentleman, Werner, did was went out into nature and cataloged absolutely everything he saw. So we're looking at all of the colors that were found in nature across various different plants and animals and minerals. And that's what this catalog sees. And you'll get a little bit of a closer up look at that when I switch over to the next slide in just a minute. But um, just as an overview of this, um, you know, it is the first time that anybody did anything like this. Um, so it's really fascinating to um, harp back to this and see these colors and see these colors that we that are found in nature, where they're found and see how much they play into, you know, our, our day to day, even still today. So there's really amazing um, inspiration that can be drawn from this book. And what we've done at Pharaoh and Ball is we've gone through and selected 16 colors that we thought translated really well into Pharaoh and Ball paint colors. But if you do get the original book, you'll see that there are many, many more colors um, than what we have in our sampling. I've often wondered whether or not we were going to be adding to the collection mm. because there's so many, there's so many in the book. Yeah, yeah. Um, hey, that's a really good question. And I don't have any proprietary information. I just truly, <laughs> at the moment. Yeah, yeah this absolutely. is actually a favorite. Uh -huh. I know. So Dutch orange is sort of, um, I, I suppose, the face of this collection. You'll see that the Dutch orange is used in our marketing here as well. Um, but the Dutch orange is an absolutely gorgeous, vibrant color um, that we uh, find in marigolds and we see throughout flowers. But also we do see it, you know, on animals. You see that little bird right there, too. Um, and what you're seeing is how our um, color chart is laid out. You're seeing everything in terms of the animal, the vegetable, and the mineral that the book originally classified the color as. Um, but you're also, of course, seeing the lovely color <clears throat> side by side. Next up, we have ultramarine blue, a lovely vibrant blue. And I'm not going to spend too much time on these because I, I know you'll all want to get a color chart and, and explore them a little bit closer yourself. Um, so in the interest of night time, I'm just going to kind of go through them relatively quickly. Excuse me. The next one is Imperial Purple. <coughs> 
excuse me, um, and actually for everyone to take a quick look at what this looks like in real life, I have been in the process of painting my front door in imperial purple. So I'm gonna pan over and let you take a look at that really quickly. A quarantine painting project. Is that, what finish is that, Jess? So this is, that, this is the full gloss. And as you can tell from the painter's tape, I'm not complete. <laughs> we are just, um, we have one coat of exterior wood primer in the dark tones primer and one coat of the uh, full gloss on the door right now. So I'm itching to get that second coat on and hopefully that'll happen. Well, that good, so at least it is here. <laughs> Absolutely, and we're just a little further north from you. So hopefully this weekend is the, is the, is the time to get it finished. So the next color is emerald green. And as you can see, what I've been showing you first and foremost are all the really beautiful jewel tones that are in this collection. And this one plays right into it. Verdigris green is next. And this one is also really vibrant. It has a little bit less yellow in it than the emerald green did and a little more blue, absolutely gorgeous. Next one is lake red. Um, so there's the debate of lake red being more pink than red. Um, so whatever you see in it, this is the color and it is a really gorgeous one. Now, it wouldn't be right if we added a collection of all the vibrant jewel tones and we didn't honor some of our Pharaoh and Ball neutrals. So there are a few neutrals in the collection as well, starting with Snow White. Next, orange colored white, really lovely, warm, vibrant, would be good in a, um, a north facing room to bring it some life. Skimmed milk white. Ash gray, it's a very fair on ball color with a little bit of a gray undertone to it. I think it's skimmed milk white that is described as the white of the human eyeball. Yes. Yes, it is. And I, one of my favorite descriptors from Warner's book. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting one. Everyone latches onto it. And it's funny because when I first saw this, I was like, well, there's no way. Like, I, I hope that your eyeballs aren't that color because it seems just too. <laughs> <laughs> Not white enough, I guess, is the best way to say that. <laughs> and let's see, broccoli brown, broccoli brown, which is very interesting in terms of its name because I've never seen brown broccoli, unless it's gone really bad. <laughs> and, um, but it is a very, it's a very cool, very rich color. Another one of my favorites is Scotch Blue. It has that unmistakable depth of color that you get with Ferro and Ball colors and finishes and is just absolutely gorgeous in person. We had one customer who purchased some of the Scotch Blue and actually painted a bedroom. We, oh, and wow. we, shared, it, we shared it via Instagram maybe a month or two ago, but it is a spectacular color. Gorgeous. I'm gonna scroll back and see that one. All right, Sap Green is the next one. Another true Pharaoh and Ball feeling color that has a little bit of a muddy feel to it, um, but in a really good way. And duck green. Um, so, you know, we've had a lot of deep grays, like <clears throat> the room that I'm in. Um, we've had the popularity of the deep blues, like Hague blue. And I really think that um, something that I'm seeing a lot more, I don't know about you, Anthea, is we, we do see a lot more in the dark green realm being used. So as everything ebbs and flows, this is one that's very of the moment. Well, and this is a really great exterior New England color, um, classic in terms of shutters or doors, um, often seen with like a yellow or white, the yellow and white and the deep green. So this is a welcome addition mm -hmm. for our New England market. Absolutely. Very true. And this is something that we don't have anything like that in the core collection. Um, so it is a really great uh, addition <clears throat> to the palette. Crimson red, another one of those, is it red or is it pink? And why are you calling it red colors? <laughs> um, but unmistakably <clears throat> warm and absolutely beautiful. Yes, we actually have a debate with our friend Liz. Actually, Liz has a debate on what color to paint her wall. Crimson red um, or, sulking, or, or sulking room pink. Ah, the new color. Okay, so, yes. Crimson, crimson seems to be the... Um, favorite at the moment, but I don't think the trigger has been pulled yet. 
I see. I love it. Uh, Crimson will have has like a, a little bit more saturation than the Selking Rum Pink does, I think. A little yes, bit of that touch more redness, yeah. Yeah, and it feels a bit more uh, bright than mm -hmm. the Selking Rum Pink. <laughs> yep, I agree. And then we have deep reddish brown, last but not least. Um, absolutely beautiful, absolutely saturated. And one of those <clears throat> colors that it's like, this one, uh, unlike some of the reds, the pinks, pink reds, you know, you kind of know what you're getting. Um, this one is really uh, a tough one to read. I hugely recommend sampling this one um, with a sample pot before you jump into it, just because in some spaces I've seen it look much more red, and in some spaces I've, look at, I've seen it look much more brown. Um, and I love those colors because, you know, it keeps things interesting and it changes throughout the day. Um, but again, you know, to really get a sense for what that's going to look like in your space, um, I would, I would sample. <laughs> well, and for me, again, this is another New England classic um, color in terms of Boston brownstones, historic districts mm -hmm. that were in here in downtown New Bedford. I think this um, speaks well to New England as well. So. Absolutely. I think what, um, I know that brings us through the 16 new colors. Um, yeah. What we've been working with them since September, um, since the two, since the palette launched, um, has been well received. And mm -hmm. what we've done here in the drawing room is we've coupled um, the colors by nature in this new collection with a lot of our artisan collections. Um, so we've been able to pair them with some of the hand-hooked rugs that we have, some of the um, fine art paintings, um, and have found that they, the, the play of light um, with the paint as well as with the artwork has been received very well. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to be pulling some of those up here in a minute. Um, other than That's painting great. your other than painting your door, what other uh, products uh, projects have you, you been doing during quarantine? Oh well, the door painting is is kind of the big fun one. Um, I also uh, invested in a steam cleaner, <laughs> so that's getting sure. put to use. <clears throat> a little bit less exciting, but there's some carpets that really needed it. So, yeah, <laughs> I bet. So <laughs> this is. Um, this is one of our uh, first images that we've put together. And this is a collection uh, of the pottery with the, uh, a color, the Color by Nature palette. This is crimson red um, here with ash gray and scotch blue. And we had paired this with a piece of pottery by Amy Thurber. Um, Amy is based out of Dartmouth, Mass, and her pottery is... She uses um, real plant material and impresses that presses that plant material into um, the clay. Has some really beautiful glazes that goes with it. Um, it is on our online shop under Dove's Foot Pottery, um, and we're in the process of getting all of that up online um, during quarantine. Um, so Amy and her husband will be. Her husband is an author, and he'll be participating during one of our virtual events next week um, for AHA New Bedford, which has now gone virtual and is VAHA. That's on Thursday. And he, they're going to be reading for, from their book In the Wake of the Willows. True naturalists, both of them. And on the floor here, um, what you'll see is actually we had a conversation yesterday and I have a sample here. Um, this is a 100% wool rug that's made in Fall River. Um, it, Fall River Mass. Um, so it really pulls pulls the Scotch blue nicely, and that's a um, piece of American made upholstered furniture. So I think we have on the next next palette. Um, this also pulls in, and it's a closer closer image of the Merida rug. Um, Joni joined us yesterday. You can see it on our YouTube channel. We had a conversation about their making. Um, these rugs with sustainable materials. But this one is pulling in a couple of the fabrics from Kravit, as well as some drapery hardware, and then that same color palette. Um, and this G-Clay, these are just fun um, G-Clays by Mark Rulestone that we have. 
Actually, my sister who's watching has one of these. I bet she really likes it. <laughs> I feel like if you wanted to pull in a color from the old collection, you could even pull in the brinjal with that beautiful painting too. Oh, right. absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. These palettes, um, mm -hmm. we, we stuck to the colors by nature, but for some of these interior palettes, um, on the exterior palettes, which we'll share with you in a little while, we did actually pull in some of the older colors, or not the old colors, the yeah. core colors, I should call them. <laughs> so they're not really old. And then this is all set on a tape. This is all set on a table by Michael Pietragala, who's a furniture maker here in New Bedford. Um, this is actually an antique white oak table that he has. Um, this this is our favorite Dutch orange. Someone asked earlier if I had a favorite. I do love my oranges. Um, so Dutch orange is one of my favorite. It's hard to pick a color um, from this collection that's a favorite because so many of them are jewel tones and I do tend to um, like the jewel tones. So this is um, Dutch orange with um, emerald green, sorry. And uh, I believe that's snow white with it. Um, down here in the corner, we have this paired with um, design number five fabrics. Uh, Beth Odens is an interior designer, um, jack of many trades, and has created this fabulous fabric line. She's based on the Cape, um, on Cape Cod, and she, you can see more of her fabric line um, on designnumberfive.com. We have samples here in the shop as well. Um, but she was inspired by the sea, but not necessarily traditional seashore motifs. And a favorite of many uh, is the work of Michelle Poirier Mazone. So because we are on a, in a coastal location, um, we do tend to see a lot of water images as well as fish fishing. Um, these underwater images by Michelle are spectacular. This is not a painting. This is actually a pastel drawing. Um, she is currently working in oils and we have some of her work um, available in oil, but the majority of the underwater scenes um, are drawn in pastel. And this collection is also on the online shop. These little guys here, I don't wanna forget, um, a great way to change the interior look of a room is just to change some of the details. Paint is always a good option, um, but you can also um, change the look of a piece by just changing hardware. So this is actually a cabinet door hardware that's made by Karen Zahari, who is based out of Dartmouth, Mass. And we have her as well, so. Ha, speaking of finding things in nature. Uh, so this is uh, Dutch, Dutch orange again, uh, with a spectacular oil painting by Christy Gunnels, um, this great blue heron. Um, his beak just screams Dutch orange, I don't know. <laughs> it's like they're made perfectly to go together. <laughs> it's like it's a color from nature or something. <laughs> Um, this one is paired with another little piece of pottery by Amy Thurber, as well as this is a cotton rug. Um, we have a relationship with Luminous Rugs in Providence, Rhode Island, um, and we're able to have made to order um, as well as some antique rugs through Luminous. They have been um, a good partner for us. So this is our same antique white oak table with the um, crimson red and the, help me, Blue. imperial purple. Is that the, uh-huh, yes it is. <laughs> it may very well be. That is um, the imperial purple. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I just need, I needed a tip there. Um, again, with Karen's cabinet door, um, cabinet knob hardware, um, this is another sample from Luminous Rugs. Um, these are made to order and we sell them by the square foot. Um, so we have a variety of different samples and they vary from probably $24 a square foot up to $50 a square foot. Um, this fabulous painting is an oil painting by Robert Abley. Um, he is based here in the New Bedford area and has 
a fabulous um, ability to capture light in oil paintings, um, very similar to the way that light plays with the Farron ball paint colors. So I, one of the things that I found was um, pulling in the wallpapers by Farron Ball with the color by nature. This is a sample here of Gable, uh, which is a quirky farm scene wallpaper, which I was not, um, I was not really excited about when I first saw, um, but it has, a, a lot of people have responded well to it. Um, it's got a variety, with the smaller memo samples, it's harder to see the entire pattern, but it's got a variety of sheep and farm animals in addition to the farmhouse. It comes in great colors. And this was, um, this is set up with the lake red, um, as well as the, it's like this is the ultramarine there. Yeah, vertigo green. And then I think this is the ultramarine blue. Yeah. yeah. Um, awesome. These are set on a hand hooked rug by Jill St. Cour. Jill is a um, former costume designer and textile designer from Western Massachusetts. We don't have a lot of artisans from Western Massachusetts, but she is one of them. Um, when we have a variety of her, of her hand hooked rugs with this um, painting by Kim Morin Wynick. And I have to say about that gable paper too, because um, I had the same sentiment that you did, but it was like, yeah, well, I don't know really where this would get used, but it now lives in the nursery. <laughs> and uh, my daughter, absolutely, she's getting to the age where she can actually go up to it and point to the animals. And so it's a really, it's a, it's a fun paper to have for that sort of thing too, that interactive quality. Mm -hmm. So I think what I can do, um, I'm going to try something new with this platform because we have a couple of questions in the comments. I think I may be able to show them. Let me see. So you can take your, um, see what happens. Yes. Oh, oh look wow. at that. So Jess, I'll let you answer um, Laura's question. Okay. So this is a tough one. Um, I will say that I love them all equally now. <laughs> um, <laughs> don't you have to do that like with your children? Um, the Dutch orange I think is my favorite because it's just so different. It's a really unique color that you don't really find in a lot of other places except for in that, um, you know, beak of the bird in the painting. Um, but it's not a color that you see in your ever in your commonplace um, you know, paint selections. And it just has this incredible depth. And yellows are tough because yellows can feel a little eh sometimes. Um, and so in a yellowy, orangey way, it just has an amazing life to it that I absolutely love. Yeah, that Dutch orange we used in a holiday pop-up at the New Bedford Art Museum back in December when we all used to gather in crowds. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but the Dutch orange worked really well for that particular installation. Um, so you're right, it is very unique. So I think, um, see what happens with this one. So I'll answer this one because I, um, I know where that exterior door is. <laughs> so I would say best that the um, best color for the exterior door to go with a brick wall would be the duck green. Um, mm -hmm. Her her trim, her exterior trim is actually like an orange colored white. Okay. Um, and brick walls. So I think um, the exterior would look good in duck green. And we have a fabulous door knocker from Colby <laughs> Smith that would look great on the duck green door. That's fantastic. I have to second that. I love duck. <laughs> it would look great like that. So I think with this with this question, I think we may have to go back a couple of slides because I'm not sure. Um, ah. What color was the white previously? I'm not sure if we can answer that one. Yeah, that's a tough one. Unfortunately, if we don't know which when exactly yeah. that question came in. Lil Lily also did say we had a beautiful rug. I think that's the, the hand hooked rug. Um, so we'll go, we'll keep going with that. Let's see here. So that's what we have for questions so far. Um, do we have one more palette? Uh, 
I think we're through with the interior palettes. Oh, nope, there we go. There it oh, is. I love this one. <laughs> yeah, so this one actually we uh, shared on our Instagram feed this morning. Um, this one is the deep reddish brown mm -hmm. with, um, I believe it's emerald green. I think and so. Ash gray? Ash gray, yes. The ash gray yeah. looks much darker there next to the green um, than it does in the color card, but that just shows you um, mm -hmm. the play of light on different things. And then this is also shown on a hand hooked rug by Jill St. Cour. Um, and these uh, rugs that we have in the shop are probably about three by four feet. Um, this is one of the collections that we have in the shop that's not handmade. Um, however, it's very popular. Um, there are wood charts that are from a variety of different um, coastal locations. Um, this white is ash gray. I think Lily was just asking us, I, yes, because that, okay. that just came up or the previous slide. Um, and then the uh, the basket, we have a collection of Nantucket baskets, which are made by Janice Card, who's based out of um, South Carver, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. So I think, um, as you can see, the variety of different things that we have in the drawing room um, has been a really good complement to the colors by nature we've enjoyed using them. Who's your pal behind you? Oh, <laughs> yeah, working from home, you, you don't get any <laughs> alone time. That's Boone. <laughs> Boone. Yeah. It's very quiet. Actually, um, Liz's dog, Ginger, always participates in the conversation. Um, <laughs> when, when we're yeah. to, Keep your fingers yeah. crossed, though, because if the right yeah. dog walks down the street out front, then uh, it won't stay like that. <laughs> So with the new colors being launched in the exterior eggshell, um, we've seen, like you, painting front doors as well as large um, exterior painting projects coming through. Downtown New Bedford is rich in historic architecture. Um, many of the homes were built in the late 1800s um, and within our neighborhood here downtown. We have a partner um, who we have, who the drawing room has been working with, Laura Parrish and her husband. Um, I can add this here. La um, Laura and her husband, Nick, own this ho home in downtown New Bedford. Uh, it's known as the Whale House on Airbnb, as well as some other um, creative rentals. You can find them on um, Instagram. So what we thought uh, we started talking to Laura. This is an Italianate style home. It was built in the late, teen, late 1800s. Um, and Laura can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it was built by for Herman Melville's sister. Um, she'll pipe up if I'm incorrect. But this is the um, current color scheme. And what we thought we would do for this particular presentation is look at what would happen um, if we were to change the color scheme of this particular house. Um, in the Italian style uh, period of architecture, trim was not painted white. Um, and I think you talk about this a lot just with um, what white paint uses titanium dioxide. And that was developed in the 19th century. Um, so white trim is a pretty much a 20th century concept or maybe even later than that. Um, mm -hmm. So Laura's, Laura, Laura is saying, yes, it was rented by Catherine Melville and it was built in 1855. So this puts it squarely into the Italianate style, um, which is de um, defined by all these eccentric pieces of trim. And while we were working on this, it's a lot of trim. <laughs> Um, so the palettes we've devel developed um, are four colors each. Um, typically, we would use three co with three colors, um, but the, um, with the amount of trim and the amount of detail, a fourth, possibly, you could probably even bring a fifth color into these schemes. 
Um, so this particular color scheme is chosen from the core selection of ferrule and ball, not from um, colors by nature. This is from the 132 colors. And the body of these homes was typically painted a stone or an earth, earthy color. Uh, so for this particular scheme, we chose Sudbury yellow, mm. which is here for the main body of the house. Um, and the trim is a shade lighter, actually a couple shades lighter here. Um, this is Farrell's cream. Um, which we've chosen to paint in the, ver the variety of different pieces here. We've used blue gray, which is one of my favorite, very calming colors. Um, blue gray as the accent trim color. So there's quite a bit of accent trim in Italianate style homes um, from shutters to brackets to other little finials. Um, and one of the, one of the important pieces to remember about Italianate style is that the window sashes, the frames here, and it's a little bit difficult to see in our photograph, but they were always painted a dark color. So for instance, now in many homes, if you're building a new home, black windows are the new rage, but for many years mm -hmm. we were putting um, white windows in. Um, that was That's not a historically accurate piece of mm -hmm. um, style. So in this particular scheme, this is mahogany. Um, so, and the, and the door, um, the front door in an Italian, Italianate style um, would typically be a stained wood or a dark color. So they, they would even go so far as to um, do a faux, faux grain on front doors. So this is our first pass at um, changing the look of the whale house. And then we have a second one. Mm. Oh, this is the third one. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. I can go with it. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> I was like the quick, the, I, we could have gone either order here. Um, so again, this color scheme is chosen from the um, core palette. Um, Again, a lighter version of what we were looking at in case the Sudbury yellow is too intense. Um, still staying away from a true white, but as we talked about earlier, Farrell and Ball has a great selection of whites. Um, who knew that half the card is white? <laughs> <laughs> uh, or neutrals, I should say. Uh, so in this particular scheme, I chose a setting plaster for the body of, of the... Um, structure um, and this is paired with ammonite um, for the trim color. This is probably as light as you would go and for some folks may not be historically correct um, because it's too light, um, but definitely shows a brighter version of the structure. Um, and then for the accent trim color, we used card room green, um, which is also a on the brackets as well as the shutters here. And this window sash color, um, possibly also front door color is brinjal. So the fit, one of the things that's not visible in these images is that the paints come in different finishes. Um, exterior eggshell, which is a 20% sheen would be your basic exterior um, paint, color, paint finish. Um, and then we like to use the full gloss, um, similar to what Jess did with her door on front doors. So this brinjal potentially would be full gloss. Yeah, and something that I always talk to people about when they're selecting their finish is just, just be aware that as you go higher and higher in sheen, um, the more that the imperfections in the surface will be accentuated. <laughs> so um, that's something that I'm dealing with with my front door because it certainly isn't perfect and it's something that I'm just accepting. But if you are a perfectionist and you want that absolute lacquered mirror look, make sure that you are doing the utmost sanding. <laughs> um, it is really important just to kind of manage your expectations in that way. Yeah, lo lo lots, of, lots of prep um, as well as execution. 
Yeah. Cool. And actually cool. a, another kind of fun fact on the color front, because I it kind of just came to mind when you were talking about the whites and not going too white and historically they're not being extremely white whites in the chart. Um, a fun fact about our chart at Farrell and Ball is the first iteration of this color chart um, in the way that it is now was actually the numbers. Except oftentimes people will ask why the numbers are all over the place. Yeah. But the first iteration of the chart was actually numbers one through 95 and it was a 95 color palette. Um, and if you look at number one, number one is a color called lime white. And that used to be our whitest white that we offered. So oh, interesting. yeah. And if you yeah. compare lime white to like all white now to the truest white, it's very far off. You know. Yes. yes <laughs> so, and then we have our last scheme, which probably is truest to um, the style, but maybe not as vibrant or bright as folks would like. Um, so this this palette is chosen from the Colors by Nature um, collection, and the body of the structure is in ash gray and often the trim was painted darker rather than lighter in these um, style homes. Um, this is broccoli brown, which we have incorporated um, in the trim with sap green for the brackets as well as the shutters. And then our window sash um, and potentially front door is in the scotch blue. So as you can see, just the um, different palettes significantly change the feel and the vibrancy of the structure while all of them accentuate the details. Lovely. Thanks, I'm uh, hoping to be able to assist more folks with exterior color schemes such as this. Um, Laura was kind enough to be our volunteer. Yeah, the ability to actually place the colors on the on the, the side of the building in this way, digitally, um, I feel like makes a big difference. Exteriors can be really tough, um, especially picturing a, a huge scale. Um, and I find that, you know, people are often hesitant to go too dark um, on the interior, but that can be true on the exterior too. And the exterior where you're getting so much natural light, um, you know, not at all times during the day, but most of the time when you're seeing your house, um, you can afford to actually go a bit darker. Yeah, absolutely. So we've um, we've been busy here with both interior paint and exterior paint projects. I actually have a couple of my own going on at home as well. I'm still working on the exterior um, for my own house, which is an all white exterior trim because it's a newer house. Um, we have Hague Blue, one of my favorite Love. colors for, for siding. Um, and then I ended up using the blue ground um, for the pop of color for my doors. That's so great. I can actually pull those colors up, but I don't have them at the moment. Um, one thing to note, and it is true, I, I tend to use my own house as my experiment ground. Um, full gloss is not recommended for use on plastic. Um, so you probably are wondering why I'm bringing that up, especially when we're talking about exterior doors. In the in the New England area, many doors are fiberglass. Um, some of them are by Thermatru, and fiberglass is a fine product to use the full gloss on. Works really well. Um, if you happen to have glass in your exterior door, um, note that. On some doors, there's a piece of molding around the glass, and that particular piece of molding is typically made out of plastic. Um, so, not a just a fair warning if you're painting a fiberglass door, um, the full gloss does not adhere to that plastic. Um, I actually ended up painting my garage door, which is a fiberglass door, um, and it has those plastic little frames around the glass, and I just I just repaint it every year, <laughs> um, but it does, the full gloss does uh, peel. I would go with the exterior eggshell if you have yeah. any kind of gloss. Content. Very good find and not one yes. that I have not heard that. So thank you. <laughs> it's a good, good, but so the exterior eggshell works fine on that then. 
Yeah, the exterior eggshell works fine. Um, so on all of the cans, um, reading the labels is really important, as we like to say, and understanding what you're applying the paint to. Um, always ask questions. Uh, Jess and I are available to answer technical questions. Um, if we're stumped, we can send it to our friends um, in Dorset, and they're I know they're always happy happy to help. So we are selling paint um, both online and for curbside pickup. Um, we've been doing some con consults via FaceTime and Zoom. So if anybody's interested in those, um, we are all still available virtually. I'm glad um, glad some of you have took the time to join in this morning. Um, I don't see any other questions. So what I can end with is a big thank you to you, Jess. And um, I know Farron Ball has a great social media presence. So if anybody's interested in learning more about Farron Ball Direct, follow them on Instagram as well as on Facebook and others. Um, we also have our own social media pages. A big thanks to Laura um, from The Whale House. And a big thanks to Liz who helps us behind the scenes making all of these virtual presentations possible with as few um, technical glitches. <laughs> so I hope everyone stays safe. Jess, I don't know if you have any parting words. No, just thank you so much for setting this up. And um, like Anthony said, if there are any questions at all, feel free to get in touch with her. Um, she can get in touch with me. Um, you know, we're here, we're happy to help and um, you know, have fun with your projects. <laughs> Yeah, happy spring and happy painting. Thanks so much. All right. Bye.